Hey guys, this is Down Phoenix, and we are at the season finale of what I'm playing, season one, where we are playing Piggy Ball for the Nintendo Switch. Funny enough, this was the last game I reviewed before I started getting out of game reviews late last year, and it's kind of an interesting way to end what I'm playing for this season. It's going to take a little bit of a break because I'm going to be starting college soon and yada yada. I don't want to get into details with that. But anyways, the fact of the matter is need to take a little bit of a break and focus on me for a bit. But I wanted to show you guys what this game's all about because, yes, I reviewed this game already. If you want, you can just check the link in the description or I probably will have a fancy little uh, you know, thing like they usually have up at the top to recommend different uh, videos. You click on that thing, you can see the review. You can see a lot more condensed way of seeing what this game is about. This is going to be more of an in-depth look, which of course I did the live streams. If you're into the live streaming, just check out the live streams. But this is going to be a lot more in-depth look, maybe for people that really aren't sure what this game's about they'll get a much better demonstration of that with this here video this is what i'm playing as i like to do what i'm playing is kind of an amalgamation of let's plays and reviews and discussions and all that kind of stuff you know it's its own thing it's kind of meant to be a one-off thing typically and so i want to kind of show you the basic premise of piggy ball Essentially, the objective of the game is to eat all of the tennis balls as quickly as you can, if possible, of course, you know. Um, and if you can't do it that quickly, well, that's okay, because you can just, uh, you know, go ahead and still get the objective, typically. Most levels will not have a time limit or any kind of penalty for not succeeding immediately. So don't worry if you don't do that. Don't worry if you don't if you don't succeed immediately because everybody has a chance ultimately in this game. You know, everybody really does have a chance and that's really cool. It really is cool the way that it's all handled in this game. So we're going to go ahead and go around and just grab all the balls up here and eat them all. That's the objective, guys. A very basic basic objective. It's very simple, but there are a lot of twists that get involved. As you see here in the very early part of the game, like when I take damage, for example, you see this little pie graph thing represents the amount of time before my pig is forced to puke. So now keep in mind, if you're like really squeamish about gross puke and things like that you can actually really tone down the graphics significantly for that if that makes you squeamish so don't let something like that deter you from playing this game because you can really tailor it to your perfection so i can show you some of that right now if i go to say the video options for example i can turn down the particle effects and barf as well as um, you know, being able to show bacon bits, which I think is like the chunks of bacon that randomly flow out. So you can adjust all of these little things to your taste. And there's also tons of accessibility options as well. If you have trouble with, say, color blindness and that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of cool little features with that. So don't let certain little things like that deter you from playing this game if it looks like something that interests you. Uh, so like I say, the mechanics, they do change quite a bit. And as you notice, there's balls here in this overworld area. So this overworld area, in a way, is kind of like exploring through a game like Mario 64 or Super Mario Galaxy or whatever, where there are secondary objectives that you can complete within the main hub world areas. And these objectives can often be helpful as well, you know. So it's not like it's all about only completing the objectives within the levels themselves. There are a lot of other ways to handle it. And by the way, of course, we do have various stage selection options as well. So everything's pretty cool as far as that. Let's go ahead and warp to another area, show you guys a little bit more gameplay 
so you can see a little bit more of what is transpiring with this game here. Uh, by the way, this game is available on Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Steam, which has been available on Steam for a while. That's the version I reviewed last year. Uh, this game just recently only came out to consoles. It was supposed to come out earlier, but I guess the developer just wanted to make sure to have a little bit extra time to really, really get this console port right. And I think they have succeeded. I'm glad that they have succeeded. At least in my opinion, they have. Now, the Switch version isn't perfect. There are a couple of problems I have noticed, which I'll get into in a little bit. But everything has went out very well. It's been very well done. Okay, let's go ahead and do this here. They might notice I didn't go through those balls right away, and there is a good reason why I didn't do that, as you'll discover here. That's because my pig has to squeeze through tight spots and I have to automatically eject balls if I try to squeeze in those tight spots. So instead, I decided to focus things around there. All things you have to do in order to get the fastest possible times. This game rewards creative play styles very much and notice how there's a huge mess of balls here, but if I grab those, I cannot get to the other balls quite as quickly. So the best way to do this is to grab the one solitary ball by itself and then I can just chow down and grab the rest of the balls. No problem. And look at that. Doing pretty good in the leaderboard. Uh, there's some people ahead of me, obviously, but this kind of creative play does help quite a bit in getting through this game quickly. So definitely keep that in mind. Now there is a ghost here. The ghost, of course, can hurt me and can cause me to puke balls. So you want to try to avoid him if you can. And by the way, nice Pac-Man reference, right? I mean, everybody loves ghosts in Pac-Man. They love to kill Pac-Man, of course, but the ghosts have all kinds of interesting personalities, and that's actually somewhat the case here, even. Uh, even though the ghosts are only here to a limited degree. So, you also have these types of objectives where you compete against AI, comp you know, bugs and trying to do these various party minigames, and they're kicking my butt on it right now, unfortunately, because the star is just, like, lining up for them perfectly, and I can't get there in time because everything's just going perfectly for them. But I will eventually get it, and we will race it out. Give me those stars. Thank you very much. And the cool thing about these little party games that you compete in is you can play them with your friends. So there is a party mode that you can participate in with up to three other friends, and you can have a good old time with that. So I wanna show you guys a little more of what's going on here. Let's show you a sub boss fight. I wanna show you a sample of what a sub boss fight is like, cause each stage is broken up into anywhere from two to four areas where you have to get medals in order to unlock the pearl. The pearl is used in order to help with the space station because you have to get all these pearls in order to help power the space station. Um, but anyways, enough about that. Uh, let's go ahead and go find the sub-boss area. Where is that sub-boss at? I don't remember exactly. So you can fast travel between the different substations and whatnot, although unfortunately, as far as I know, you cannot fast travel to a specific uh, little world within the world, if that makes sense. You notice, by the way, there is a 14. I have no balls there, or pearls there, or whatever. That's because that's a secret world that you can only get to if you get gold in all the other ones. So if you're a completionist type person and you want to get the maximum possible gameplay out of this game, there are a lot of ways to do this, and the game does reward you for that. I can't seem to find the sub-boss fight, but let's go ahead and show you the actual boss fight. Which is a giant accordion dragon. An accordion dragon, look at that. And it makes horrible, horrific sounds. Cause why wouldn't it? <laughs> so, this boss is really easy to fight. You just attack it from behind. And you just do that a few times and you're good. And as you do that, he will spit this puke stuff out, of course, which can hurt you. As well as he will slowly get shorter and more nimble as you keep on causing damage. But we're good for now. 
And you want to try to hide behind his body when possible. Except, I don't know if he's going to hit me right there automatically or what. Because he's like literally right on top of my dude. Okay. Whew. My dude. My chick, rather. Because I'm playing as Princess Bow, not Prince Bow. <laughs> so I wouldn't be a dude. Unless, I guess, uh, I'm one of those people that everybody calls dudes. Now, you might notice, for example, got these giant little bug things. They can, of course, hurt you. So you don't want to get a, you don't want to get attached by them. I guess the accordion boss can spit them out. And unfortunately, the accordion dragon hit me, so we're going to have to uh, attack again from behind. Boss fights, you know, they're big areas, so obviously, it's a pretty good idea. I think, I don't know if I took damage or if I just... I'm not really sure exactly if that hurts or not. Okay, but I guess it didn't hurt. I guess it just stunned me or a little a little bit or something. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Come at me, bro. Come at me. Spit that crap at me. Yeah, like I said, the boss does get pretty fast eventually. So you gotta be careful. I almost ran into that little spike there. I don't know if you caught it, but I was like, oh, well, I did run into the spike now. <laughs> but that's okay, because the boss is dead now. The boss is finished. And we succeeded. So that's that. That's a boss fight. That is a sample boss fight. Obviously the easiest one. Because it's the first boss fight. <laughs> so you get a total of five sub-bosses as well as five regular bosses that you can encounter in this game. And each world has its own theme. So you might notice for this one, it's called the Outer Courts. Everything's kind of like a tennis court in outer space. Which kind of makes sense because... For some reason, everybody on the space station is obsessed with tennis. And I guess, yeah. <laughs> That's cool, I suppose. But let's go into another world. So let's go explore some of the other worlds here. So we also have the Sushi Gardens, Sports Bar Arena, Kitchen Chaos, and Astro Farms. And by the way, it does show you... A sample of what items you found in each of these individual areas and what items you could still find so if you see something grayed out that means you could find it there but let's go ahead and hop on over to the sushi gardens show you guys a little bit of gameplay there um, so every world of course it has its own aesthetic but it doesn't just end there because each station that you go to does introduce new mechanics to the game so Sushi Gardens introduces the fact that you can actually take damage. Now I can, of course, in this overworld, but if I go into certain areas, I will have different uh, things where I have to avoid hits. See, where it says avoid three hits and eat all ten yummies. So that means that you have three HP, you can take physical damage here. So you can't just blindly run into enemies like you could previously. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, so just be careful as you go through these areas, you know, don't run into the knives if you can avoid it Although sometimes you may not be able to easily do so So I'm just doing whatever I can now keep in mind if you do take damage you can still Technically go through everything. Let's go ahead and grab that here And I've got a puke of course, but I'm gonna go ahead and force a puke Because I don't want to puke all my balls this is a little bit of a strategy that I kind of picked upon myself to uh, kind of help out here. All right, so I can take one more hit before I die, and I died. So it's a challenge. It really is. It's something you have to keep in mind there. Let's just skip that stage. I'm going to show you some more. I uh, don't want to, like, get stuck on a stage here. Of course, I took damage right away because I suck. And, yes, I really do suck. Some of these stages I have struggles getting through, you know, just because of how terrible I'm at video games. But I digress. So let me go ahead and hop over here. The timing is kind of ridiculous. I'm just going to tank the hit because I don't want to have to deal with that crap. There we go. So you notice that little thing I just dropped the balls into? I kind of deposited them. And that's useful because it allows me to... Oh, great. That's not good at all. So I can do this here and still dying. 
still dying. I cannot complete one of these stages, apparently, because obviously being on the camera means that I'm going to play a lot worse than I typically do, uh, funny enough. So go slowly, so I can actually use this ability here to kind of like do some solid snake type crap here and get through without getting hit. And get that, of course. But I can also just use the D-pad. So you do have both D-pad and analog movement to take advantage of here. And sometimes the D-pad can be very handy if you want to really get those tight 90 degree moves. You can do that. And it's very handy, very helpful. So I'm wondering where I go here because I didn't see a clear path on where to go next. So let's just retry that level. I want to try to beat at least one of these stages to show you guys that I did successfully beat this game. And it's not just that somebody played this game for me, which that's probably what it's looking like to some of y'all. So I do apologize about that. But uh, let's go ahead and grab that ball, and we're going to get back in the groove here of things. We're going to go ahead and actually not die this time. Not fail utterly. I think that would be a great idea for us to do. You know, try to actually progress through these patterns of enemies and attacks and whatnot. As opposed to just dying like we were previously doing here. But now we got the balls, we can take the damage all we want. So that's the thing you have to keep in mind. You just want to complete things as quickly as possible. It's not about anything else, honestly, you know. But obviously, just completing it, period, is good enough. You don't really have to complete everything. So this one here, you have to uh, get these... You just basically have to flip the board, I think. I think that's all you got to do, except I'm not scoring points. So I'm not actually sure if I'm doing this right. Oh, no. Oh, I remember now. So that little thing that's floating around, it's like a king of the hill thing. You just have to stay in that zone. So I don't actually have to worry about any of this crap here. I just have to stay in here. And that's how I get my points. Yep, I remember now. It's been a little bit since I played this stage. So just keep that in mind. So like I said, this is just one of the many, many games that you can participate in throughout this game. And the mini games are all, of course, featured in the campaign. But you can play these with friends as well if you want to have, you know, kind of a base Mario Party-esque time, you know. Like if you want to play something with fun little mini games that anybody can play because they're really simple and easy to play, then you've got that here, man. It's really cool. It's really cool. Maybe one of these days I can actually get something set up with some people. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted this on the Switch is for this particular mode. You know, to be able to successfully do that, so... I'm going to go ahead and move on to another area altogether. Uh, actually, I do want to show you guys the boss fight for this area, though. The boss fight in this world is pretty cool. The uh, squid pirate, or whatever it is called. Probably the only other boss I'm going to show you all here. Just because it's a really good one. That's not it right there. Where is that boss at? And by the way, you notice right there, I got some bananas over there I can go grab. I got a couple of puzzle pieces. There's all little objectives. You know, the bananas, you'll notice the icons, of course, up at the top. Those are power-ups that you can use through the levels to get through a level. So if you have a hard time getting through a level, you can use a power-up. The only thing to keep in mind is if you do it that way, you can't rank in the leaderboard. So, you know, that's just something you only want to do if you had trouble beating a particular level. So just keep that in mind. As far as that's concerned and I don't know if this was an actual hold on 13 looking for 13 that's 9 so I'm needing the actual boss area which I think might be not there at all where is the boss area if I can't find the actual boss area then I might just have to show you guys okay it's over this way Yeah, I remember now. Okay. Yeah, it's very handy you can do that, of course. It's a four-button game. You don't even use the uh, shoulder buttons at all, although the game does feature, believe it or not, butt remapping. Like, holy crap. Why can't we have more of that in console games nowadays? Button remapping should be basically the standard, as far as I'm concerned. 
and that's a great feature. It's really good that you can map buttons exactly the way you want to. So yeah, this squid pirate thing, of course, very first phase, very easy, just attack with the balls, but he starts throwing out a little more punishment, so... I, I don't know, these, these first couple of phases are actually really easy. He's really only tough on his last phase, and even then, I, I'm pretty good at it now, so I don't have to worry too much about it. But I just really like how creative the boss fights are. They're really cool. And they all have, like, their unique little twist. And they all also, very smartly, tie into the mechanics that you learn throughout that uh, area that you go through. You know, they're very tightly learn all kinds of new ways to deal with the bosses so it's a good positive reinforcement for the game you kind of get to figure out exactly how you can master the mechanics that you learn through that world by using them against the boss and bam we did it pretty quickly a lot quicker than the first boss actually so very cool stuff you know very cool indeed that we're able to successfully do that. Uh, but yeah, that's boss two right there, man. Very simple, very easy, good times. So we're gonna go ahead and show a little bit more. Um, let's go ahead and check out the sports bar arena. I wanted to kind of show you guys how some of the mechanics really tie in here. Uh, because, like I said, the aesthetics change, but also the way you play the game in some aspects do change as well. There's always new mechanics being introduced throughout the game. Like, even in World 5, there's still new ways to play through the game. So, I want to show a level that features some of the physics that will be on display. Because you see a lot of ways that the physics are implemented here. And uh, I wanted to see about getting that there. Hmm, how can I get in there? I think this guy wants something. I'm not sure what exactly, though. If I can even figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Let's see if I can grab that beer. I'm trying to give this guy a beer. Maybe he'll, uh, maybe he'll drink up. Yeah, it makes him drunk, but he doesn't, like, move out of the way at all. Okay, so that's something I'll have to figure out eventually to play through the game. Try to figure out how to deal with that guy and get rid of him because I am not sure how to do that at all, but I can find a nice little uh, power up in there if I can manage to get in there. But I digress. I'm kind of rambling. I'm kind of really just being nonsensical with the whole thing here. So let's go ahead and check out some area here. I think one of these will have some of the areas I want to demonstrate here. So you'll notice, for example, that you can use the puke to make things move around in the conveyor belt here. And the reason why you'll want to do that is you see how kind of complex this is. It's kind of like a freaking uh, Rube Goldberg machine with how things move around and... It's just really cool. It's really cool to see stuff like this. Of course, you got those little uh, pull cues coming out, knocking things around, and just making things kind of weird all together. Really cool times. Really cool times indeed. Let's go ahead and shoot one of these bad boys out again. I didn't shoot in the right spot, so of course it's going to go like it did there instead. Let's try something else here. I'll have to go down here and shoot one. So you can kind of follow along the path. You know, you can see what you need to do. It's all pretty basic stuff, honestly. It's not a huge deal. But I want to try to hit these other balls wherever possible. You give me that. Oh. So you'll notice those little guys right there. When they get puke, they like to lick it up. And then they'll disappear afterwards. Because for some reason, that's their favorite thing in the world. And they live a happy life once they get that puke ball. <laughs> so, and of course, I spit tons of bacon out. The Baconator, buddy. Okay. 
But, yeah, so let me just go ahead and demonstrate a little bit more here. This was one I think I had a lot of hard times with, because apparently I only got a bronze. So I had to trick the pull cues in order to help me out here. And then, of course, through here, I'm going to take damage, because I always do 100% of the time. I'm really good at taking damage there. So, yeah. And I took damage again, of course, because... I just cannot resist taking damage any at all, man. I'm like, I'm really good at that. <laughs> really good. Okay, pick that out, pick that out. Get them spikes out of the way. Okay, lose all the balls that I had, because why not? You can see I'm having a really hard time, and I'm bound to die again, just to warn you, because. I said it starts to get a little bit more challenging once you get to these worlds, you know, like you have to worry about the fact that you can take damage and that uh, you have all these obstacles to avoid and you have to be very strategic with the way you play the game. So just really interesting little stuff. Now, one thing that you might notice here, you notice these things go down whenever I dash. I actually figured out that there is a trick to that. Interestingly enough, and we have these little cards. These are like little teleporters that you can use to warp around different spots, so We're starting to add some more complexity. Like I said, it really ad adds a lot of new little mechanics as you go along And you just kind of have to kind of adapt and Learn as you go with that stuff. So I can go ahead and grab all these balls and grab those balls and Now we can go through here. I guess we can get the uh, bowling ball and knock all these pins because we're gonna need that bowling ball for another spot, of course. That's why we got to do all that so we can get these balls. Okay, I want to try to avoid that pin if possible, but before we do that, I'm gonna take that dart that I just got to cut an opening there. I want to grab that bowling ball again because I'm gonna need that bad boy. Let's get it. Okay. Got one more to go. I'm about to spit a ball to force it out. Let's do that. So, that's all there is to it, man. A lot of moving parts going on in order to get the best that you can possibly get. And I set a new record that time, of course, so that's fantastic. So, yeah, that's Piggy Ball for you guys. I think, um, I think it's a pretty good demonstration of things. I'll, I'll show you a little bit of high-level gameplay, some of the end gameplay, just so you can get kind of a feel for how challenging it can get. So, not here. Okay, we'll get one last area here. Uh, we'll do a Gamma Module spot, I guess, because, I mean, Gamma Module tends to be the last areas, so they're going to be really tough areas. And they're going to use a lot of what you learned and apply that to the game, of course. So, let's go ahead and get through here. Those vines are really annoying. They are super annoying, so keep that in mind. If you want to not deal with, like, a bunch of bullcrap constantly because those vines are super annoying and of course I have that problem where I just randomly make uh, little spikes whenever I dash through so we're not going to keep that power up we'll go ahead and switch that around of course uh, let's just do the wax lips wax lips are really useful this one has a lot of things going on because you have these ghosts that you use to go through these different planes and you have to use those ghosts in order to warp around and it gets pretty tricky it really does so right there I'm gonna I'm about to puke a ball there uh, thanks to that ghost that hit me in the freaking I don't know what to call it uh, yeah not really sure but yeah it adds a lot of new little things here and I have to you know those ghosts don't hit me of course when I'm not in the ethereal plane or whatever I want to call it the ghost plane that's good enough to call it for me not ah, great where is that guy at 
Okay, he's gonna he's not gonna spawn there anymore. Okay. Give me that ball, buddy. There we go. Hopefully I got a good time that time. Nah. <laughs> 15 seconds is the goal, but at least I no longer have the uh, bronze. I don't know, I guess this isn't the toughest area, but it is pretty tricky because I have these bulls that I have to use to lure out to break up the fences in order to get to certain balls, so... I have to utilize the enemies that are actually a detriment to the player, to me, in order to accomplish the objectives I got, so... I can't really avoid the enemies here, and I don't want to open that up because that's just going to fling a bunch of spikes everywhere. So that'd be a terrible idea right there. Yep. And notice that that little sound effect that they make, it sounds very much like whenever you, uh, yeah. There we go. Get those going on there. Great. Yeah, pick those balls out. Let total chaos apply here. Now, you can't do your uh, dash whenever you're in this state, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully he busted open enough. Okay, yeah, I'm in trouble here, though. I'm not going to get a good time this time. I have a good vibe of that because I really screwed it up. Alright, okay. Got one last ball to grab here, and we did it. So, the challenge, of course, isn't solely just, oh, you're gonna die. You know, you have to accomplish a lot of different ways to get through here. So I have to use these trees right here to free up the balls. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I can kind of, like, grab them all together. Okay, yeah, there we go. Because these balls are all going to make me puke anyway, so I'm just going to try to get it in kind of a succession to do it as quickly as possible. You know, not chase them down, but have them come to me. That's a smart way to play it. And that's just what this game's all about. It's about rewarding very creative play and doing so in a really cool way. But at the same time, you could still beat the game, even if you're kind of a player that just doesn't really get certain mechanics because the game is forgiving enough you know to really give you a fair shake at everything you know it doesn't try to force you into all kinds of crazy things or whatever you know like you kind of play it at your own pace and you play it how you want to so we're gonna go ahead and go through this huge maze try to get this bull to help me out with getting that power up or whatever there. Disguise, as they call it. The disguises, of course, are what give you the ability to change into different things and they kind of help you out. But I can't get through there for some reason. Oh, okay, it's because because I can't, that's why. <laughs> I have to go through it in a certain way in order to make it through there. So go figure. We're gonna go ahead and do just that. We're gonna go ahead and participate in this little conundrum here and we're gonna get to that bull we're gonna get him lured out come on come on billy the bull let's do it let's do it hmm. all right and we're gonna bust our way through here hmm. of course you don't have to worry about taking damage in this overworld area if you don't want to and ain't gonna matter because you can't die in the overworld, so. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Still have to have him come after me. So I have to be targetable. And unfortunately, he went a little too far there, but that's okay. We're gonna have him go this way instead. Ah! Get, okay, get, get. Okay. I've just about got it here. We're gonna get him. We're gonna get him to go where we want him, want him to. Nice, nice, okay. So he's almost through there. 
free up all that space for us. That way I can just easily walk up there and not have to deal with that crap. Because <laughs> that would be nice. That would be fantastic. No, I can't. I'm stuck. There we go. And it's kind of an annoying thing to do, but this will give me a disguise that I can use, I think. I'm pretty sure that's a disguise. Better zoom in just to make sure. Whew! Okay, let's grab it. See what we got here. Cowhorn smashes fences and more. Less boost stages, minus two. Okay. So, you can get these different disguises. I can now bust my own fences. I don't need the bull anymore. So, that's pretty handy. And that just, again, lends to the strategy of the game. You can do all these different little side objectives and missions in order to find different ways to kind of maximize your playstyle, you know, to get the fastest possible times. And the game does track not just the times themselves, but also what uh, suit you use to get that time. So you may want to try to master getting you know, the fastest speed with a certain suit if you so desire. So, there's just a lot to this game, and I highly recommend it for anybody that likes puzzle, action, arcade-type games. You know, this game is definitely recommended for fans of Pac-Man, Katamari Damachi. If you're into the Mario 3D games, you know, 3D Mario games, definitely recommend it. Um, it's just a fantastic game still. Now, that being said, there is one thing I'd like to complain about this game. And that is the boss fight before the very last boss is pretty ridiculous. Like, I'm not joking. Like, like I said, the game's challenging, but it's a fair challenge. But that boss fight is not a fair challenge. Uh, the target time to get a silver medal in that boss fight is 80 seconds. I don't even know what the gold medal is. I did it in 720 seconds. I did it in, like, an extremely long time. And that's because the boss fight is so hard to manage, and it's just a pain in the butt. Uh, but other than that, I really like this game. You know, I just think that that boss fight needs to be kind of toned down a little bit. Because, I, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something with it. But the way that you have to micromanage that boss is a pain in the butt. You can watch my last live stream I did of the game if you want to see what it's all about. But, yeah, thank you guys very much for checking out this one I'm playing. And in early 2020 we will be back i will actually pre-record some episodes so even though i'm taking a break from releasing them on youtube i will have some content ready to go whenever that time comes uh so we'll see you then uh but till then down phoenix out